Hello, and welcome to mini lecture 16 on the second derivative. All right, in the past couple of lectures, we've talked about the first derivatives, so how to take a bunch of derivatives. The second derivative is simply taking the derivative twice, so the derivative of the derivative. So we're going to talk about how to sketch the second derivative and how to interpret this derivative not as a slope, but as curvature of a function, and then how to take the derivative of polynomials e to the x and ln of x. All right, so starting with sketching the derivative, the second derivative, if we're taking the der second derivative, this is simply the derivative of the first derivative. So this here is the first derivative, and this here is the second. All right, so writing it in operator notation like this, so the d by dx out front, we can understand the notation that we're using here. So just imagine collapsing all of this together and you have d squared over dx squared of f of x. So this is our operator notation for the second derivative. All right, so similarly, we could write it in fractional notation like this. But you want to put these two d's together just because of how those operators work. All right, so how do we sketch the first and the second derivative? Well, remember how we sketched the first derivative? The first thing that we were going to do is we're going to find the turnaround point of the function. So the points where it switches from a positive der derivative to a negative derivative. So we have a switch there and a switch there. So we know that the first derivative is going to intersect the line, the axis at those two points. Then we identify the fact that it's going to be positive here. The first derivative is going to be positive there, negative there, and positive here. So it keeps switching in sign. Then we approximate the magnitude of that. Okay, so this is going to be strongly positive. We're going up really fast. So we kind of could imagine that we're going to have a point here. Um, we're going to go through zero. We have some strongly uh, negative values around here. And then we have some strongly positive values back around here. So we can imagine that it's going to look something like this. And in fact, that is 100% true that this is a quadratic and it's going to have a quadratic shape like this. All right, so I didn't quite draw it right. It should stay inside this plot, but it's something like that. All right, how do we find the second derivative? Well, we're just going to pretend that this is our new function, and we're going to sketch the derivative of that function. All right, so let's do this in red. What are the turnaround points? Well, we have a turnaround from a negative derivative to a positive derivative there. So we have a switch here. We're going to have a minus here and a plus there. They're going to have some symmetry to them, so they have minus and plus, and it looks like this. Let's. So you end up going from this S-shaped curve to something that looks quadratic-like to something that looks linear-like. So it's the der to sketch the second derivative, you simply sketch the first derivative and then sketch the derivative of the first derivative. All right. So if we actually evaluate that this is what we get, so you can see that you have this quadratic shape and then you have this linear shape. All right, so why do we care about the second derivative? Well, it tells us a lot about how the curve works. So first of all, we know that we have a local minima of this curve. So we have a minimum of this curve or a maximum of this curve where the first derivative is equal to zero. So if the first derivative of f of x is equal to 0, that's going to be a turnaround point. So it's going to either be there or it's going to be there. But which one is it? Do we have a turnaround such that we have a minimum? Are we at this turnaround point or at this turnaround point? Well, to answer that question, we really have to go to the second derivative. So if the second derivative is greater than 0, you can think of this as a smiley face, it's greater than zero, then this is going to be a minimum. So we have a smiley face there, we have curvature, concave up, and we have a minimum. Similarly, if the second derivative 
is negative, this is kind of like a sad face, it's concave down, and this is a minimum. All right, now what about the special case where d squared dx squared of f of x is equal to zero? Where does that happen on this curve? Remember that this is the second derivative, and so that occurs on f of x here, and that is where we switch from having a sad face, a concave down, to having a concave up, and so here, as we switch from going like this to going like this, and this is known as an inflection point. It's a change in the curvature. So I've been using this word throughout that the second derivative gives us a sense of what the curvature of the function is. So if the second derivative is positive, then this is concave up. If the second derivative is negative, this is concave down. Combined with what we know about turnaround points, this can tell us about the maxima of a function, the minima of a function, or where the change in curvature changes, which is an inflection point. All right, so we talked about this briefly. What about notation? Well, we have operator notation. We have fractional notation. And finally, we have prime notation. So if I did that, that would be the first derivative. To denote the second derivative, I simply put two primes. All right, so that is our notation. What about actually finding the second derivative? Well, we find the second derivative in exactly the way you might expect that you would find the second derivative, that you first find the first derivative, and then you find the second derivative. All right, so let's do this for this polynomial here. Let's first find d by dx of d by dx of f of x. So we want to find this internal quantity here. So we have d by dx of what? Well, we simply use the power rule. We have 3 20ths x squared minus 2 over 2x minus 5. Now, note that this is a constant, so it drops out. All right. Now, we can take the outside derivative. We're going to do almost the same thing. We're going to use the power rule a bunch, and we're going to end up with 3 times 2 divided by 20 minus, now this is equal to 1. If you take the derivative of x, that's just simply 1, so we just have minus 1. Now, this here is a constant, so it drops out. All right, so we end up with, oh, I missed an x there, sorry, 6 20ths times x minus 1. All right, now we might want to ask ourselves, under what intervals of x, so on what values of x is this function concave up? Or what are we looking for here? If we have concave up, that is the smiley face, so this means that the d is greater than zero. So under what conditions is 6x over 20 minus 1 greater than zero? This is known as an inequality. We can solve an inequality just like we solve an equation by moving things from the left to the right hand side. There's a couple of special rules about switching the direction when you multiply by a negative number, but we'll just go piece by piece. All right, so first of all, let's add plus 1 to both sides of this inequality. All right, then we end up with 6x over 20 is greater than 1. All right, now what do we want to do? We still want to solve for x. We want to know under what conditions um, this is satisfied with respect to x. So let's multiply both sides by 20 over 6, 20 over 6, and we get x is greater than 20 over 6. Implies that the curve is concave up. All right, so that is the answer. All right, now what about how to take the derivative of just a general polynomial? We just took a derivative, second derivative of a specific polynomial. What if we take the general derivative of this polynomial? Well, if we take the first derivative, this a0 term is going to drop out, so we're going to get p prime of x 
Now the a0 drops out. We have 1 times a1x to the 0th, which is 1, plus 2 times a2x to the first power, plus 3 times a3x squared. Note that if this polynomial is of order 3, remember this is the order, it's the, uh, sorry, degree, is the highest order term. And then if we take the derivative, then we ended up with degree 2. So it reduces the degree by 1. We talked about this before when we took the derivative of polynomials. What happens if we take the second derivative? Then we end up with this a1 drops out. We have 2 times 1 times a2 plus 3 times 2 a3x to the first power. Now this is a first degree polynomial or a line. So every time you take the derivative, it just reduces the power by one. All right. Now, what about the derivative of other biological functions such as e to the x? Well, first of all, we're going to take the derivative of e to the x, and this is simply one of those special cases where we have e to the x. Now we want to take the derivative of the derivative of e to the x, which is simply d by dx of e to the x, which is e to the x. So the second derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x as well. All right, what about the second derivative of the natural log? Well, recall that the first derivative of the natural log of x was another one of those special derivatives that you had to remember, which is 1 over x. So what happens if I take this second derivative? This is the same thing as that. So we have minus 1 x to the minus 2, which is equal to minus 1 x squared. All right, so that is the second derivative of the natural log. And with that, I'm going to let you um, take on the self-study question.